Good morning. Welcome to God's house of worship here at Kilmarnock United Methodist Church. I am Pastor Penny Corey, and we hope that this worship service will be a blessing to you and will nurture your spirit. God is the Lord, and he has shined upon us. We shall proclaim his praises, Psalm 118, 27. Today is the first Sunday of the Advent season, and if you haven't had a chance to pick up the Advent devotional booklets, there's one at the back of the church for each family. Please take one home today. Also, there is an angel tree in the narthex, and uh, it's filled with uh, names and uh, um, uh, gifts that we can buy for to make uh, some child very happy today uh, on Christmas. So if you will pick those up. Normally, we do not wrap our gifts, but we are asking uh, that you wrap your gift and that you put this on the outside of your package uh, and then return it to either the under the Christmas tree or to Joanne's office. I would like to uh, thank all the ones who helped decorate our beautiful Christmas tree and uh, it so beautifully de is adorns their sanctuary, and uh, thank you to all who helped. The colors in the Advent uh, uh, tree, the Christmas tree, are white and gold, and they symbolize purity and royalty. Each light points to Jesus, the light of the world. During the month of December, uh, KUMC always receives a special offering, and this year goes to UMFS, United Methodist Family Services. Um, UMFS is a community of passionate people who help build a brighter vision of hope for troubled children, youth, and families. Here is just one story of hope. After years of seeking out support to help J.D. manage her anger, her family finally found what they had been looking for in UMFS. They offered that emotional and therapeutic support that you can't really find anywhere else. The many challenges have disappeared and J.D. has conquered much through the help of UMFS. Their coaches, therapists, social workers, teachers, and chaplains. J.D. said they basically loved me and helped me reach my full potential. So as you give a special offering this year, you can make a difference for people like J.D. Uh, just write a check to KUMC and on the memo line write UMFS. Uh, Jim Simons, uh, chair of SPRC, asked me to announce that we are still receiving the love offering for our pastor and staff. <clears throat> he said, um, it's our way of saying thank you for from our congregation. So if you would like to give a gift, uh, you can put it in an envelope and mark it, pastor, staff, Christmas love offering. You may write a check or you may give cash. Um, <clears throat> the last Sunday to give is next Sunday, December the 6th. So he says, thank you for your love and generosity. This morning, you may <clears throat> leave your offerings in the plate in the back of the sanctuary. So now let us stand and hum our doxology.
seated. <clears throat> Advent is a period of spiritual preparation for Christmas. It consists of four Sundays prior to Christmas Day. Purple is the traditional color of the Advent season, and purple reminds us of the royalty worn by kings. Purple also signifies the repentance of God's people as they wait the arrival of the Messiah. The Advent wreath is a circle of greenery which has no beginning and no end, symbolizing the eternity of God. The green color represents hope and new life that we all need. The four purple candles represent the four weeks in Advent. We light one candle each week in anticipation of the gift of the Christ child. These candles represent hope, love, joy, and peace. The white candle in the middle signifies the light of Christ to all mankind. It reminds us that Jesus is the reason for the season. The first candle that we light is a candle of hope. We light this candle to remind us that our hope is in Jesus and we watch and wait for his return. Let us pray. Oh Jesus, hope of the world, come and enlighten those who sit in darkness. Let the brightness of this candle of hope shine in our dark world. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Amen. <clears throat> You may stand for the call to worship. <clears throat> this is a time of great preparation. We have come to worship and to hear God's truth and to receive the good news. Prepare the way of the Lord. As Mary once sang God's praises, so now we are invited to worship and praise in honor of Christ. Let us pray. Oh dear God, as we enter this wonderful season of Advent, prepare us and guide us for whatever you may want to do in our hearts. Give us new insights and understandings of Jesus, the Christ child, born in a manger to bring salvation and forgiveness of our sins through his precious blood shed on the cross of Calvary. Help us to reclaim the real meaning of Christmas, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. We now will hear an ensemble of the Advent hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, sung by Laurie Breakwell, Carol Fletcher, Judy Neal, Doug Irving, and Burt Corey.
we stand as we affirm our faith with the Apostle Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This is a time that we come and give our thanks and praise to God and lift up to him our intercessions for others. So I have several that I would like to share with you this morning. Um, I'd like to thank everyone who prayed for our son Alex. Um, I have good news for you. He did pass his kidney stone and he continues to be on antibiotics for his infection. So thank you very much. Um, Steve Glessner called me yesterday and he made a trip to the ER. He has a kidney stone, so please pray that his stone will pass quickly. Jack uh, Rowe has been in and out of the hospital with complications with pneumonia. Had a call from Sarah yesterday and um, he was taken back to Regional Memorial Hospital and so we want to lift him in our prayers. Sherry Bennett asked for prayers for a friend and neighbor of her mom, Joe Creighton, who has pancreatic cancer. And also prayers for her sister, Marilyn Mozinga, who will have heart surgery to receive a defibrillator on Tuesday, December 1st. And also prayers for Catherine Murray's mother, who is now in hospice care, Catherine has had several losses in this past year and has also just been exposed to COVID herself as she visited her mother in the nursing home. Connie Stinson asked prayers for her mother, Vivian Canada, who fell and broke a bone in her arm. Curtis uh, Sampson has had uh, severe pain in his lower abdomen. Um, so we want to continue to pray for Curtis. A friend of Sally McGrath, Henry Nunn's, has several blockages in his heart. Uh, Judy and Julian Altier ask prayers for their daughter, Beth Groner. She is a 20-year breast cancer survivor and is having a three-and-a-half-hour surgery on Monday, November the 30th to remove and replace her breast implants. We ask for healing for Susie Matthews, that's Denise Cromer's daughter. She is 16 weeks pregnant and has just been tested positive for COVID. We also pray for all the family who has been exposed, Susie, Nick, Hope, Denise, and David. Um, prayers of sympathy to the Shaw family in Jackson, Jackson Tennessee as Clark died this week with complications of COVID. And also pray for Pastor Laurie Jones, diagnosed with breast cancer and also grieving the death of her service dog, Maggie. Laura and Sandy Jordan are in a covenant group together. Let us pray. Oh, merciful Father, 
We praise your name and lift our prayers and thanksgivings to you for the sacrificial gift of your son, Jesus Christ. We believe in the precious miracles that you have already accomplished through the birth of Jesus. And we also look forward to seeing the miracles that you will accomplish through each one of us in Jesus' name during this Advent season. We pray thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. We pray to Jehovah Jireh, the God who will provide. And we pray to the God Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. Hear the spoken and unspoken prayers of our hearts and send exactly what each one needs to them. Thank you, O oh God, for your all-sufficient grace that reaches out to us. Comfort those who are grieving the loss of loved ones. Thank you, O oh God, for United Methodist Family Services and for all who seek to provide hope and healing for troubled children, youth, and families experiencing many challenges. Bless their staff and administration and bless our December special offering that will go to provide for them. Bless and heal all who have the COVID virus and also those who have been exposed to it. Thank you for all the doctors and healthcare workers giving their lives to those with COVID. Strengthen them, protect them as they put their lives at risk to help other people. Oh God, we cry out for a quick delivery of the vaccines that will put an end to this awful pandemic. With all the angels and all the archangels and all the company of heaven, we sing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And just as Jesus, our Savior, taught us to pray, so now we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, speak to us by your word in these Advent days and walk with us until the day of your coming. Speak to us, O oh Lord, and fulfill in us all your purposes for your glory. Amen. We have two scripture readings today. The first is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 7, verse 14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. The second is taken from the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she 
who was, who was said to be unable to conceive in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. Mary answered, I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be as you have said. Then the angel left her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The title of our sermon today is Expect a Miracle. Let us pray. Dear God, bless our time with you this morning. Open our eyes that we may see you clearly. Open our ears that we may hear your voice. Open our hearts that we may be vessels for your use. May my sermon be delivered with excellence through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My friends, we are embarking on a new journey of faith in this Advent season. We want to focus on Jesus' birthday. We want to celebrate Christmas in a way that honors the birth of the Messiah. God intends to birth miracles. Yes, miracles in you and me. Miracles in ordinary people. For through the scriptures, God chose ordinary people, unqualified people, through whom to perform miracles. People like Moses, David, Elizabeth, Mary, and many others. The power of Emmanuel, God with us, is the power to create change in the world around us. And so, Jesus was not what most people expected. He did not possess worldly wealth, nor did Jesus come as a worldly political revolutionary or a fighting warrior who would restore the glory days of the Davidic kingdom. Jesus simply came as a babe in a manger born of Mary, an innocent teenage girl who was chosen to grow and to deliver God's precious miracle to the world. Our message today is very simple. God still works miracles today through ordinary people. And God still plants seeds of miracles in people's hearts who are willing to act on God's vision of love and light. So let me ask you a question to think about this week. Do you think that God can work a miracle through your life? There is a beautiful Christmas song written by Mark Lowry called, Mary, Did You Know? Can you just imagine how Mary, this young teenage girl, must have felt when the angel spoke and told her that she would be the vessel through whom God would give his son to the world? This song speaks of many miracles that Jesus accomplished in his life. It says, Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will save our sons and daughters? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will give sight to the blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will calm the storm with his hand? Mary, did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod. Oh, Mary, did you know that when you kissed your little baby, you've kissed the face of God? Of course, Mary did not know all these things about her baby. She did not understand all the implications of what the angel's message to her that day was. Still, Mary bowed her head that day and she said to the angel, I am the Lord's servant. 
Behold the handmaiden of the Lord. Be it unto me as you have said. Mary, did you know that your baby boy has come to make the news? And this baby boy will soon deliver you. And Luke 2 verse 7 tells us that she brought forth her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. You see, the busy town of Bethlehem had no room for Jesus. And so he was born in a humble stable surrounded by animals. His birth was so ordinary, and yet Jesus' name would be great, and his kingdom will never end. So what does God want to do with your ordinary lives today? Like Mary, God gives us enough light just to take the next step in our lives. He doesn't tell us everything that lies ahead, but God is using each of us in a transformational experience that will leave a lasting impact on the lives of others. So I want to ask you this question again. Do you think God could possibly work a miracle through your life? Sometimes the meaning of Christmas gets lost in all the preparations and decorations and shopping and cooking. We become exhausted in all the things that need to be done. In the chaos of the holidays, be sure not to miss the true gift of Emmanuel, God with us. I want you to try and experiment with me this Advent season. Try when you get up the very first thing that you do in the morning. Say, Emmanuel, God is with me. Use this to show that Emmanuel is with us all the time. It is a gift that God has given us. And then we can say, just like Mary said, today, use me as your miracle, God. As we begin the Advent season, let us ponder the angel's message to Mary. Every miracle of God is conceived in the heart of the believer. My friends, don't ever lose sight of the amazing good news that the angel spoke to Mary and now speaks to you and to me. Hear the words spoken over you this morning. You are God's miracle. You are God's agent to effect change in the world. And remember, God can use anyone with an open heart. Every spirit-filled Christian has a potential for a God movement within themselves. Christmas is a celebration of a miracle. And I believe God wants to birth a miracle in all of us. All God needs is our availability and our commitment to act and to bring love to a broken world. Like Mary, ponder the awesome gift given to us. Enjoy the journey of Jesus' presence with us. Pray with the psalmist David in Psalm 25, 4. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. In this Advent season, see glimpses of God's glory opening up before you. For God has said, let light shine out of darkness. And so he made his light to shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Wow. 
What a treasure Mary birthed into the world, and what a treasure God has given to us in the birth of our Savior and Lord. Yes, Mary did know the prophecies of Isaiah, written in Isaiah chapter 9, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. But did she know that this baby that she was carrying would also die on a cross? I don't think so. I don't think Mary knew about Jesus' beatings or his mockings and ultimately his betrayal by one of his own disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane. I don't think Mary knew that her precious baby was born to die so that he might give eternal life to those who believed. I don't know how much Mary knew, but I do know that she knew that an angel had come to her. And the angel told her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High God will hover over you and therefore the child you bring to birth will be called the Holy Son of God. She was the virgin whom the prophet Isaiah had prophesied that would deliver the Messiah to the world. So let me ask you that question again. As you think of the angel's message to Mary that day, do you really think that God can work a miracle through your life? Christmas, as we said, is a celebration of a miracle. So I would ask you in this Advent season, lay down your pride. Lay down your vanity. Lay down your self-will. For God wants to work a miracle in our broken world around us in the 21st century. So let's approach Christmas differently this year. Let us lay down our chaotic schedules of the season. Let us experience the true gift of Emmanuel given to us. Let us be transformed. Let us experience the love of a Savior who gave everything he had for us. Look for opportunities to be a miracle and to pass on the love and light of Jesus to others. Smile more often, even behind our mask. Reach out and speak a kind word to the tired ones. Deliver your miracle to the lost, the least, and the lonely ones. Remember, God births miracles through ordinary, unqualified people who are willing to be used by him. Expect a miracle in this Advent season and be the miracle to someone in need. For Jesus said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses. Acts 1 verse 8. The power of Emmanuel is the power to create change in the world through God's action in your life. It is the same way that God wants sent his angel to make that announcement to Mary. Jesus comes to ordinary people today to use for his purposes. So be the change, be the miracle, and will you say with Mary, I am the Lord's servant. Behold the handmaiden of the Lord, be it unto me as you have said. Let us pray. O oh Lord, we celebrate you and the birth of your son, Jesus Christ. 
We are grateful for your word and the opportunities to see miracles that you perform. Prepare our hearts to conceive and deliver your miracles to the people on the streets where we live. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You will now hear hymn number 196, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. The words of this hymn were written in 1744 by Charles Wesley. When Wesley was writing this hymn, he was surrounded by scenes of homelessness, orphans, and poverty. The 18th century was filled with weak religion, rampant sin, and much indifference to suffering of the lower class. Wesley penned a hymn that expresses a dear hope for Christ to come again and to set things right. As Doug plays this hymn for us, let us join Charles Wesley and all pray for Christ to return in this 21st century as the hope of all the earth. Oh, come, thou long expected Jesus, born to set thy people free. From the fears and sins release us. Let us find our rest in thee. Israel's strength and consolation, hope of all the earth thou art. Dear desire of every nation, joy of every longing heart. Would you stand for our benediction? 
The Spirit of the Lord is upon each one of us. God is sending us to bring the good news to the world. The light of the Lord shines upon us. Rejoice always. Be the miracle. And go joyfully to bring hope and justice to the world around us. We pray this in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.